Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our Lord is a good God. Amen. Our God is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to grab your Bibles quickly. Revelations chapter number 9. The book of Revelation. Actually chapter 12 verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Verse 10. And, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuses them before our God day and night. Let's read that verse 10 together again. One, two, three. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Father, we thank you for your word. May we receive it by revelation. And may we be transformed unto your glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you may sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say God's accuser. God's accuser. I can hear you. God's accuser. I can hear you. God's accuser. Now you need to understand something extremely important about Satan whom we contend with. Understand that you don't contend against your brother. You don't contend against your sister. You don't contend against that hater. You don't contend against any of them. What is actually fighting you or whoever is challenging you or the person truly challenging you is Satan the devil himself. Now you need to understand that the devil has a psychological psychological advantage to every creature that is on earth and every creature that is below his ranking why because the devil has been around for a long time and he also has data from heaven and he was on earth before men were planted in the earth Boy. so the devil has a tremendous psychological advantage he has a psychological warfare that is beyond what any human being can be able to beat unless the lord god be with you you need to understand this about satan don't fool yourself for a second to think that you can beat the devil on your own it is virtually impossible Hear me, it is virtually impossible. Because the devil's strength is not in power. The devil's strength is in his psychological advantage. He is called a liar because he's a psychologist. Teach it, man. I, 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 am, I, am, I, am I speaking to somebody? Yes. The devil is called a liar because he's a master psychologist. His strength lies in the place that he can analyze you and tell you things to convict you, to move you in a direction that you ought not to be moving. I don't know if somebody can hear me. So anyone that is ignorant of the devil's devices is already destroyed. This is why when you find pastors fighting pastors, bishops fighting bishops, you have to understand how powerful Satan actually is in psychological warfare. 
that two people saved by the same grace, preaching the same Jesus, because of differences that have nothing to do with salvation, they will fight each other as if one is the devil. It shows you the psychological advantage that Satan actually possesses. I don't know if somebody is hearing me. So if you do not have the truth in you, and the truth is not an opinion, the truth is the revelation of Jesus by the Holy Spirit. The truth is not how you feel. The truth is not how you feel, how you think, what you are told, what you heard. The truth is what comes out of the mouth of God. The truth is not what you did. The truth is not what you will do. The truth is not your failure. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Amen. The truth is what proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. The doctor may say you are dying, but God says you're healed. Amen. Whose report will you believe? Amen. I feel like I'm talking to myself. So understand this, understand this, understand this. That Satan is a master psychologist. And if you don't understand his ways, you'll be destroyed. Look at Revelation, same chapter, go to verse 3. I want to show you something that will scare you. Listen to this, he says, And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. Verse 4. And his tail drew, <laughs> his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven. He didn't take them, he drew them. And did cast them to the earth. Now stop there for a second. Remember, when the devil drew a third of the stars, God didn't do anything. Now the question you need to ask yourself, what level of lying and psychology does the devil possess that he could convince a group of angels to turn against God? What did he tell them? Wow. Come on. You are not ready to hear my message. Let me go home. No, you didn't hear what I told you. He convinced angels that have dwelled in the presence of the living God to turn against God and God, God allowed him to do what he was doing. And the third of the stars turned against God that they waged war against him that cannot be defeated, against him that is eternal, against him that is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You see, I'm trying to... Before the devil began to accuse us to God, he began by accusing God to the angels. Mm. Wow. Teaching. So good. Come on. Okay, the church is asleep. Maybe I should be talking to other people. Teaching good. He convinced angels who are created. The devil knows we have no power to beat God. Uh-huh. We have no ability. And a group of a third of angels said, no, nah, we are going to fight this heaven war. And turned against God enough to fight with him. What level of egomaniacal, egocentric is Satan that he can convince angelic beings who have never sinned to turn against God? Now, how much more for you? Good. Uh, I don't think you can hear me. This is good. good. The devil's greatest tactic is actually to accuse God, not to accuse you. Uh-huh. Let's go to Job. Let's go to the book of Job. Job chapter 1. Verse number 9. Let's start from verse 8, please. Let's start from verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, 
that there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man. One that feareth God and escheweth evil. So God is saying, Satan, did you see my guy Job? Not only does he fear me. Not only does he reverence me. But he fears evil. He runs away from evil. He wants to honor me and to live for me. Verse 9. Listen. With one statement, Satan accused God. People read this, they think he's accusing Job. No, he's accusing God. Look at this. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Does Job fear God for nothing? Verse 10, look at this. Has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. Stop right there. The devil, you, you think the devil is talking about Job. No, the devil is accusing God. He's saying, you are saying this Job guy loves you. He fears you. But the truth is, does he love you for nothing? Come on. on. Now you're not hearing what I'm saying. The devil is accusing God. He's saying, you are, you are not divine enough for this human being to love you just for you. He loves you because you have given him this. You have given him that. You have protected him. Now take your hands off these things. Come Let's on. see if you're divine enough for him to love you. You didn't hear what I'm... With one statement. With one word he accused God. He said, God, you bought his love. Yes. Come on. With one word he looked at God and said, God, respectfully... You see, the devil is wise enough because he understands the magnitude of God's power. So he cannot be disrespectful, but he can be psychological. He looked at God and said, Lord, with all due respect, you bought his love. You increased him with money. You have protected him. Why wouldn't he love you? Take everything. Let's see if he loves you. Right. Prove that you did not buy his love. Come on. Okay. Teaching good. Wow. All right, I'm Teaching done prophet. preaching. Wow. This is why every time God wants to lift you, Come on. the accuser of the brethren still accuses you. Come on. He will use God's word against you. Yes. Because his job is not really to accuse you, but to accuse God to you and you to God. Wow. Wow. God could not rebuttal what Satan said. Because God cannot make a case just with words. Because Satan raised a good point. We don't see where Job suffered. We didn't see Job having nothing. We didn't see Job left alone. So how can we prove his love? Only God knows that Job loves him genuinely. Yeah, yeah. But where is the evidence for everybody else to see? Because the Bible says, let something be established in the presence of two witnesses. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Real good. You're teaching. You're teaching. This is why you can only overcome by the word of your testimony. Amen. Without a testimony, you cannot overcome. Amen. Without your testimony being public, you are still not blessed. Amen. But, but hear me, hear me. Even though the devil is psychological, even though he's intelligent, his brilliance still does not match anywhere close to God. Why? God still uses his brilliance to elevate us. Amen. Because God nominated Job because he knew Job will not fail. Come on. 
Come on. Yes. Come on. Good. You are going through it. You come out of it. Yes. You will not be destroyed yes. because God knows. Hallelujah. God understands yes. that you have the capacity. Yes. You have the strength. Yes. You have the ability to come out of the storm. Yes. Because all things work for your good. Hey. And sit for two seconds. My God. Listen to me. God cannot be defeated and God has never been defeated. You have to understand in the biblical days, when men went to war, each nation consulted their God. Every nation consulted their God. So the Philistines will consult their God. The Egyptians will consult their God. And the children of Israel will also consult their God. Whoever consults their God, whoever go, when they go to battle, whoever wins, it means their God has given them what? Victory. I want you to understand that. Whenever there was a battle, the children of Israel will go and inquire of God. Shall we win this battle? God will say, go, I have given them unto you. But the other nations also will consult their gods. So it was a battle of what? Gods. It was not a battle of men. Whatever you're going through right now, it is a battle of gods. It's not... Hey. Amen. Hey. Amen. Now, how do we know... How do we know that God has never been defeated? And in fact, God does declare it that I am God and apart from me there is no other. How do we know that God has never been defeated? Number one, it is the fact that God could tell outcomes of events before they happened. And God told the children of Israel, if you guys don't make your ways right, I will raise a king from this place and he will come and defeat you. Now, the defeat wasn't because God lost the battle. God used another nation to discipline his children. Not because their gods overcame him. But it was a form of chastising his own children. That when they were disobedient, he will raise somebody to beat them up and then still deliver them. Notice this. God sends them into Egypt and tells them they will be enslaved, but he will bring them out after 400 years. Yeah. It means that God is the one controlling the battles. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The gods of Egypt never captured the children of Israel. Yeah. It was God that allowed them to go into Egypt yeah. so that he can chastise them yeah. and mold them and prepare them for the next dimension that is to come. Amen. You are in that financial crisis because God designed it. Amen. You are going through that. Let me find come somebody on. I can prophesy to. You are going through that fire because God intended it. Yes. You are going through that difficulty because God set you up yeah. not to be destroyed. Amen. But for you to be lifted. Amen. Amen. But for you to what? Be lifted. So you need to comprehend this by the Spirit of God. You need to understand this by the Spirit of God that the workings of God and the wisdom of God surpasses all understanding. But the devil having a psychological advantage over us, not God. Many times we will not see what God is doing because we ourselves become egocentric because everything becomes about us and not about God. Uh, I wish somebody could hear me. You see, the devil is a narcissist. He knows how to bend everything to be for him. But he will use you to fulfill his will because a narcissist always will manipulate. Yeah. The devil comes to Adam and he begins to accuse God to Adam and Eve. He says, don't you know God doesn't want you to be like him? Yet the very reason they were created 
was to be exactly like their creator. Yeah. Yeah. In his image and his likeness and to have dominion like God and to dwell with God eternally. But notice the devil did not point them to the tree of life because what makes God, God is not knowledge but eternity. Yes. Because anyone that is eternal will possess knowledge that is eternal. Knowledge that never began. Mm. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was not knowledge but it was what? Understanding of things that are evil and good. It was not information based. Because Adam and Eve eat the fruit, they notice that they are naked, but they already knew they were naked. Mm. Mm. They could discern what nakedness meant. When Solomon wanted to rule, God did not give him the spirit of knowledge. God gave him the spirit of what? Wisdom. You have to understand, knowledge is information. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is literally a, a tree of discernment to know which is good and which is evil. That is why they said, God said, why are you hiding? Because I'm naked. Who told you that you're naked? Notice, they had understanding of their situation in light of their own sight, not the sight of God. Nevertheless, what they saw was true that they were naked. But what does God's opinion say? Because God does not operate off your wisdom and your understanding. God says, my ways are not your ways. Yes. That means his ways are not ours. His thinking is not ours. The way he sees things is not the way we see things. That is why the same God can tell the children of Israel, don't marry somebody that is not an Israelite. Moses marries an African woman. His brother and sister used the Bible and say, you Moses, how dare you break this? Did God only speak by you? God comes down and says, how dare you speak about my friend? God is not defending his word. He's defending his friend. Amen. I'm here to announce to you, God doesn't need any defense. If he needs a defense, he is not God. Amen. Stop trying to defend Jesus. He doesn't need your defense. Yes. He's God all by himself. Yes. God came down and said, hey, if I'm the one who says that, I can change it. How dare you talk about my friend who speaks to me face to face? Who do you think you are? Notice how God just flipped the page. This is why you see people who are narcissistic, especially now we have many of them in the church. They want you to be, the word says, the word says, no, 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 me and you are not the same. Come on. How God called me is not the way he called you. Amen. I don't know if somebody's hearing this. Paul said, I can go to the house of idols and eat their food and I have not sinned and it has not affected me. But for somebody who is weak in the faith, does not know the truth. They may stumble because of what I have done, but in the sight of God, I have done nothing wrong. That tells you wrong and right is not as black and white as you think. That's good. That's good. Many a times, we argue things that have nothing to do with salvation. If it has to do with salvation, good discussion. That is black and white. You don't have Jesus' hell, period. Jesus is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. There is no other way to heaven except through him. That is established. If you don't believe Jesus was born of a virgin, died on the third day, he rose and he seated at the right hand of the Father, you don't even have salvation. That is not debatable. That is black and white. There's no gray area. But there are other things when it comes to spiritual maturity. You trade very carefully. Hear me, trade very, very what? Carefully. So Satan is accusing God to Adam and Eve. Turning Adam and Eve against God for the very thing that they were created for. Jesus is led to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. Satan comes to accuse God to God.
If you are the son of God, after you are fasted like this, he can't even give you bread. And he gave the children of Israel who are so disobedient bread in the wilderness. You, you are in the wilderness, you have no bread. And he claims that you are his son. Is it not written? I have never seen the righteous forsaken and their children beg for bread. You, you are here hungry in the wilderness. You don't even know how you ended up in the wilderness. He brought you here to die. Are you really his son? He's accusing the God man to God the Father to turn them against themselves wow. so that me and you are not. Come on, so you're helping. Come on. He's a psychologist. Yes. I don't know if you can hear me. We can hear you. He's playing a psychological game with God the man to turning against God the Father. The Holy Spirit brings God the man in the wilderness. God the Father desired it, but God the Son is suffering because the flesh is suffering. How many of you this morning you are in the wilderness? How many of you are feeling like, God, where are you? Father, have you forsaken me? The doctor said, I'm dying. Where are you, God? Bills are piling up. Where are you, God? You said you love me. You said you will keep me. But Lord, I am not seeing any sign of that. Guess what? The accuser is already accusing God to you. Father, I have been serving you faithfully. Why is the world prospering and I am not? Father, I give my tithe all the time. Why is it I am not increasing? There's a certain woman when I was ministering this weekend, she came and she said, Papa Lovi, I'm, I'm going through this. I pay my tithe all the time. I told her, woman of God, stop. God will not give you anything because you do something. That tithe you're giving, who gave you the money to give to him? Amen. Do you see how the devil is just psychologically? <laughs> tilting you. To exactly what he wants. So that you can turn against God. So that you can decide and say, mm, I don't know. This is kind of too much for me right now. I feel like giving up. But we know God. He who started a good thing. Come on. Amen. Come on. I prophesy to you. Yes. The God who started with you is the same one. That will bring it to fruition. Amen. See. As I'm finishing this message, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is Jesus Lord only when things are good? Is Jesus Lord only when you have food on your table? Is Jesus Lord because your loved ones are with you? Is Jesus Lord because you are enjoying blessings? If God was to take all those things away because of the accuser, will you truly look at God and say, Lord, genuinely, truthfully, take the whole world, I just want you. Is Jesus a majority with you? Is Jesus all you will ever need? If G is Jesus the center, the center and the rock of your life. If you cannot answer that genuinely, it is impossible for your season to change. Because if God is to promote you, there is somebody that will debate your promotion. There is somebody that will argue for you never to be promoted. 
and you will be tested for the faith. That is the point of faith. Faith is not faith until it is tested. Belief is not tested. Belief is an opinion. Faith being substance, it must be tested. Amen. And every work that is of God must be tested by fire. Boy. The devil did not take from Job. It was God who stretched his hand and took from Job. The devil said, now Lord, stretch your hands and take from him. The devil didn't say, oh, okay, uh, 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 I'm going to strike him. He said, I can't do anything, you're protecting him. Take your hand off him. Take what you have given him. Let's see if he will still love you. Let's see if you are divine enough. Then God said, God took everything from Job and said, touch everything but don't touch him. So when the children died, it wasn't the devil, it was God. When the animals died, it wasn't the devil, it was God. That is why the Bible says this. If they be evil in the city, did the Lord not do it? This is in Amos, I believe, 4. If they be evil in the city, and you have to remember the word evil there means uh, calamity. Many times God will use it to chastise. The devil will think he's doing it, but he's not the one doing it. If God is in control, then he's controlling everything. Amen. You see, Christians don't like that. God is in control, but something happens, they will say Satan. If God permits it, then he knows what he's doing. You don't, I don't. Amen. If they be evil in the city, did the Lord not do it? It's in your scriptures. But why is it happening? Is it happening for destruction or is it happening for elevation? God has decided all things work for the good of those who love him. And those who are called according to his purpose, God has decided it will work for your good. But the question is, will you fall for the lie of the enemy? Will you fall for the deception of the enemy that you yourself make God an enemy? And miss out on everything that God has for you? It's very easy, by the way. It's not as difficult as you think. The moment you believe God just heals other people and not me, you just stand against God. The Bible says, he who slew his own son, will he not also, he will not spare anything good from you. He killed his son for you. Killed him. So that me and you can have salvation. We can be changed. We can be restored. We can be healed. He allowed his son to be whipped with a cut of nine tails. Tear his body like barbecue. Destroy it so that you can have healing. And you see your neighbor being healed instead of saying, Father, I am ready for mine. You say, Lord, you just heal other people. I don't know when he's mine. The devil just tilted you away from God. Because Jesus did not die for your neighbor. He died for you. Amen. 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 You didn't hear what I said. Salvation is personal. Yes. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Not our Lord and Savior. Your Lord. Yes. Satan wants you to look at other people. Because he wants you to measure yourself to other people. Because that's what narcissistic people do. Satan looked at other angels above and said... I can be better than them. In fact, I'll be more like God. He wants you to have the same mindset. Look at her. She thinks she's better than me. Look at him. He thinks he's the only one God can use one day. Notice your heart has already been darkened. It's already been turned away. You want God to bless you, but you have a vendetta against your brother and sister who is blessed by God instead of you being inspired by them yeah. to believe that God can do the incredible. God can do the... In Am I talking to somebody? Yes. God can do the supernatural work Amen. that no other person can do except God. Amen. 
in a period of time that only God can do. When will you prove that you love God? Because you don't prove God because you sang. You know, let me be honest with you. Worship is not song, you know that. This is an evolution. True worship was never singing, you know that. Even though you can sing worship. You see, this is why many times, because of being unspiritual, we hear melody and we love melodies and we forget words. Yet worship is in the words, not in the melody. A song can be extremely fast, but it's worship. And a song can be extremely slow and it's nothing. Are you hearing me? Yes. Many of the songs you think are worship, they're not even worship songs. True. To be honest with you, 98% of them are not worship songs. None of them. Very few are actually true worship songs. Because these people haven't suffered. You see, true worship is born going through the fire. On. Testing death yes. and God bringing you out of it. Yes. Man. You develop something that is called attachment issues break. You are no longer attached to the world. Amen. All you care for is God and not his hand. Come on. As long as you want his hand, you have never worshipped him. Wow. My God. What is your worship story? Mm. Majority of people have never worshipped God. They don't have a worship story. The man who sang Amazing Grace was a slave trader. Almost died on the boat. He ended up freeing the people that were with him and he went on his knees. That's when he sang Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost and now I'm found. His song was because he realized whether you are black, yellow, green, blue, we are all made in the image of God. Amen. And he was lost and he received the revelation mm. of salvation yes. by grace. Pure and, 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 and undoctorated. How do you say it? Unadulted. Uh, unadult Let me find the bishop. Pure and what? Unadulterated. Worship unto God. Uh. An adulterated worship unto God. Pure and, and what? Adulterated. Worship unto God. If you have not been stripped, you don't love him yet. Come on. Wow. Come Your love is still questionable. Mm. Mm. And if you indeed love him, then all things begin to work for your good. Amen. God is allowing you to go through crisis. So that your love can be manifested. Yes. And when your love is manifested, everything else you're waiting for is yours. Amen. Because God will not withhold anything from those whom love him. Amen. But the only way you prove, the only way you prove you love him, everything must go. Everything has to go. You know, when people look at Lovey Elias, they see me wearing nice clothes. They see me dressing like, you have no idea what God took from me. You have no idea what God stripped me from. If you know our story, my sister is here. If you know, if you know our story, my wife is here, my son is here, my nephews are here, my, my cousin is here. If you know our story, you will know that I'm a miracle standing before you. Amen. Amen. That is why when they talk, I laugh at them because they have not gone through anything. Yeah. When the fire will come, yes. they will be the first ones you see them lining up here, looking for mercy. Come on. They have no idea what God has taken from me. God began to strip me since I was six, taking things I'm wondering. 
what kind of what did we do death after death calamity after calamity this is the first time in my life and i'm saying it before the lord the first time in my life i've known what it means to be stable i was so used to seeing things broken that nothing moves me anymore it doesn't matter what happens it doesn't even it doesn't even everyone want, why are you so calm why are you so chill because the chaos i've seen this is child's play i am rooted in christ because everything that could have taken my foundation was taken and i dug deep hey! into christ yeah. 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 you have no idea the tears i've cried ah uh, i have cried too much my whole life was tears after tears there's nothing i can sit down and tell you that was perfect and beautiful about my past except god wow wow we were broken up as children because parents are gone parents are dead we have crazy chaotic things no family member to help you all of them turned their backs on you you are just the oldest brother is 14 taking care of the rest that are young having to work in nightclubs performing to earn 30 dollars a week to take care of his three siblings you have no idea how we have suffered you have no idea what we have gone through you don't have any clue that is why when i dress i do it unapologetically amen when i wear my rolexes when i do whatever i don't care amen. because when i was down only god brought me up amen when i was dying only god lifted me up amen when i was lost only god came for me amen so i don't care about anybody's opinion yeah. i don't care about it amen. i don't care about nothing I'm not worried about anybody. I know where he brought me from. Yeah. If there was somebody that was to reject God was me. I have every right to reject God. But I've never done it. Here I am. Healing people, delivering people. My brother is suffering. I go before God. He tells me, your brother is going on this day, on this day, at this time. I have decided. So why do you use me to heal people and my own brother is dying? That is my will. Do you know what kind of stripping that is? Do you know what kind of pain that is? And God has used me to heal people with the same condition. Worse condition. God has used me to raise dead people. And I'm looking at my brother. God has decided no. You have no idea how we have cried here. I didn't even have strength to go to the hospital. It's my wife that used to take care of Chris. I couldn't even look at it. I was so broken. I didn't know what to do. My brother Masengo could not, didn't even want to come back to America because nobody knew how to deal with it. It was just on our own. We are looking at each other. But every week, I'm standing in church delivering people, prophesying to people, healing people from brain tumor, cancerous tumors. My brother wasn't even cancer. He was malignant. And God says, no. I am taking him. You have no idea the pains we have gone through. You have no clue the sufferings we have seen. We've seen broken families. So you have no idea the pains we have faced. So when you see God using me with power, don't admire it. You haven't paid the price. Amen. You have no idea what it has cost me. When you see thousands of people coming to see me, you have no idea the price of the oil. The price of the oil on my head. You have no clue. No clue at all. I just want to be prophet. Congratulations. Me, somebody says I want to be prophet. I say, please, don't. If he didn't call you, don't. Because you won't have the strength to stand the things that come. I didn't come from the streets. I came from a beautiful home with responsible parents. And God threw a whirlwind amongst us. Imagine you're, you're eight and you know the hour and the time your father is dying. You even see how he's going to die. Do you know what kind of trauma you go through? Why God, why aren't you stopping it? Why are you showing me? 
You have no idea the pain some of us have gone through. When I see when I see people looking at and people having mommy, daddy, mom, dad, dad, mom, I don't know what that is. Before the Lord Jesus, I don't know what that is. I never had it. I don't know what that looks like. When I see families gathered for Christmas and stuff, oh mom, sister, what I don't know what that is. I have no idea what that is. I never I never had it. And not because people chose to go away. Whirlwind scattered everything, but all this was for your benefit. That one day God will lift me up. Amen. That the anointing that is within me will benefit you. That came from tremendous, tremendous, tremendous pain. That is why I can carry people and I can carry a lot because I have done it all my life. Thank you, Lord. I look at my brother Bamba. I knew him before we were both young boys, before we had children. I know my sister, his wife, who is in heaven right now. Mm-hmm. I know him. When he's calling me, I'm praying for him. Praying for him. God, do something. God, do something. God, do something. God tells me, his wife by this time is going to go be there for your brother. She's coming home. He messages me late at night. He says, she's got, I told him, my brother, I already know. But he's here standing with his daughter, serving God faithfully. You have no idea what people have gone through. Amen. You have no clue. I don't know how many times Apostle had a stroke, come out of a stroke, having pains that he shouldn't be. I don't know how many times. He has suffered tremendously, this man. That is why I love this man. He's very, very faithful because I have seen his face disfigured one side. He couldn't move his mouth. Stroke after stroke, heart issue, body issues, this issue. They even write him off. But guess what? God always lift him up. So when you see him standing here, you have no idea the price people have paid. Amen. If you see his tears, I know what him and his wife have gone through. When I look at my bishop and I look at the betrayal, the suffering, that the man of God who has planted hundreds and thousands of churches, him and his wife, deciding that we don't even you know what we are just going to leave everything behind let's just sit home this is too much and then god to revive their heart to serve god you have no idea i am a benefactor of this man i'm a benefactor of his wife if you look at them tears in their eyes you see us standing here singing hallelujah you have no idea you have no idea the pains the pains that people have gone through, the suffering people have gone through in order to stand to minister to you. Then some foolish small boys and small girls will come online and say, this one is at this, this one. What, what have you gone through? You have no idea the price people have paid. But we stood because God gave us the strength yeah. to stand. Yeah, and I prophesy to you, yeah. the Lord will give you strength. Yes. The Lord will empower you. Yeah. The Lord will lift you up yeah. in order for you to stand. So that you may receive all that God has ordained for you. Amen. Listen to me. The fire is uncomfortable. But it will not compare to the joys that will come after it. Amen. It will not compare to the blessings that will come after it. Amen. It will not compare to the magnitude of the increase and the blessing that will come. Yeah. The presence of God that you will enjoy, it will not compare to it. Amen. It will wipe every one of those te- tears away. Amen. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord Jesus. Lift your hands to the Lord Jesus. And you are going to pray. Father, I recommit myself into your hands. I have allowed the enemy to accuse you to me too many times. But I have understood today that Lord, I ought to stand because you are good. You are good all by yourself. You don't need me to be good. You are good all by yourself. So Father, I pray today, give me the strength to stand. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Father, I commit myself into your hands today, O oh Lord. Lift your hands and pray. I commit myself into your hands. Give me the strength to stand today, Father. Give us the strength to stand today. I have allowed the enemy, Father, to accuse you to me too many times, O oh Father. But today, give me the strength to stand as I commit myself to you, O oh Lord. 
Give me supernatural strength to withstand the fire, to withstand the fire, to withstand the stone, because the joy on the other side is worth it. Echo sandele mariki li marusto la kizimada. Vego le mari fanus elegante le maruste. Vandali makure de bena. Zoke le pariba sukle idivinisto. Rinde malakrus idivinisto la bahande. Give us the strength to stand, O Father. That even when things are confusing, you are still good. God, give me the strength to stand. That where you have chosen to be at any particular time, oh God, your presence is there. Your power is there. Your purpose is there. God, renew our strength. Renew our strength, O oh God, that we would remain where you have called us, so that we would behold your glory, that we would continue and finish well in the things that you have called us, God, so that we would re we receive the glory, so that in the midst of our situation, and in the midst of our glory, we can be God, that we would see you lifted high, 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 that we would see you Oh, we commit ourselves to today, O Lord. God, give us your when everything to else is gone, and where we have opened our mouth, our earth is full of God. May we God love you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. Fill our mouths with the word you have made, O God. May we commit to you even more. I receive your strength. Lift your voices, lift your voices, lift your voices all over this place, lift your voices.
request in this place. Everything you came with, lift that family member, lift that sickness, lift everything that you came with. All over this place, wherever your prayer request is, for whomever you came for, this is the house of miracles. This is the house of the wonder and power of God. And tonight, as, today as we've heard that the accuser of the one that has sent us, the one that has sent us, that same one, has come to answer each and everything that you have petitioned before him. Amen. So today, approach the throne of grace with faith. Yeah. Approach the throne of grace knowing you have been given access to the power of God that is making itself manifest in each and every situation Amen. of your lives. Amen. Lift those prayer requests high. Lift those prayer requests high. Father, in the name of Jesus, your people have come before you in faith today, believing, Father, that you are not only the answer, you are the only solution. Father, we don't go any further than you. We don't seek any further than you. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, every family member, every friend, every son, every daughter, every mother, every father, every petition put before you, Lord God, we declare it so done in the name of Jesus. Yeah done in the name of Jesus every sickness healed in the name of Jesus every bound free in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus put your hands on any place of your body that you need healing right now in the name of Jesus the angels of the Lord are ministering to you even now even now father in the name of Jesus we declare healing in this room deliverance in this room healing in this room deliverance in this room with every testimony that should come out of this place father they will know the god that heals they shall know the god that delivers they shall know the god that sets free that father even doctors reports that have claimed the impossible father you are the god of the impossible so we thank you father now for divine healing all over this place all over this place holy spirit holy spirit Holy Spirit, fill this place, fill this place, fill this place. Lift your voices just for 30 seconds, just for 30 seconds. Decree healing, decree deliverance, decree freedom in the name of Jesus. of rejoicing in this place. One shout of rejoicing in this place. Your thankfulness positions you for the miracle of God. Your gratefulness positions you for the miracle of God. Begin to thank him. Begin to rejoice. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 